Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna check out Rational Believer yet again. This time with his video, How It All Began. Creation of the Adam and the Enmity of Iblis. As always guys, most of you, over 70%, are not subscribed to this channel. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. I have no idea what to expect from this video. So so with no further ado, let's have a look. I want to take you back to the beginning, to the beginning of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the first human being. I want to share with you an awareness. That's actually very interesting because I just had this talk with my wife yesterday and we discussed Genesis and how the Islamic perspective of Genesis is. I realized that I know very little to nothing about Genesis, the creation of Adam, the creation of the world from an Islamic perspective. So this should be good. The plan of Iblis himself and his conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his arguments which he put forth the challenges he put forth and the double challenge which Allah gave him. Adam salam's response, why he ended up on earth and the plan showing us how the plan is continuing today before our eyes. Iblis first of all was a jinn. And he had a position among the ranks of the angels. He actually worked among the angels, literally. But he wasn't an angel, he was a jinn made of fire. The angels are made of light. Allah tells us that the angels are made of light. The Prophet tells us this. Yep. He had a special rank, he was God-fearing. He was devout. He was a worshipper, wallahi. And he believed in the oneness of God and his might and power and everything. And he turned to him, he was a righteous, servant of God in every meaning of the word. However, something inside of his heart, when we say heart, we don't mean literally the organ that's pumping blood. When we say heart in Arabic, we mean the mind, something here, in here, something inside. If you change hearts, literally, you're not going to change that. that. That stays with you, the mind, something in here. Iblis had something in here something that wasn't right. He, it was a secret. And Allah, He doesn't put that in you. But Allah gives you the opportunity, the, the circumstances to have it if you want to, depending on how you choose. This is the will of God. His knowledge is unbelievable. So Iblis, Allah tested Iblis. It was a test and there were many other plans as well to this test. At the same time, the test of Iblis is also, was also going to be a test for Adam السلام, our father. And the test of Adam was also going to be a test for us. So Allah said to his angels one day, Inni khalikum basharam min teen. He said to them, Oh my angels, I am about to create a creation, a being made of clay. Now the angels had known the jinns before what they had done. They shed blood and corrupted on earth. This earth was here before us as according to the Quran. And the jinns lived here and they still do. And they corrupted and shed blood. So Allah sent the angels down and they actually had a battle and they forced them out into the islands of the world. This is knowledge which Allah told us about. So the angels replied, They said, O oh, our Lord, are you going to create a creature on earth that will shed blood again and corrupt one. again when we glorify your name and your and praise. Right. They're not questioning, but they're asking to seek knowledge. They're confused. Oh, our Lord, look, I mean, you know, here we are. We're praising you. We're glorifying you. The jinns, look what they did. We don't understand 
the reason behind creating another creation. I mentioned this before. Throughout my own spiritual experiences, I encountered different beings. Take this as you will. I'm not saying, therefore, it is true. I'm simply saying what I saw within my own spiritual experiences. You can discard this information. I'm simply sharing it for informational purposes. Throughout my spiritual experiences, I encountered different beings and even angels. The way that I saw angels was that they were made out of a pure light, but even saying light doesn't really give it justice because it was such a pure light that even transcends our worldly light. It was a truly godly light in a sense. Moreover, they really had no free will automatically they would fall into God's will. They had no other choice. They had a certain character, a certain amount of individualism. They weren't a whole unity in that sense. They were still separated to an extent, but they had no free will. They had to do God's will. Shed blood and corrupt. What are they actually saying? They're afraid. They're saying in other words, oh, our Lord, have we done something to you? Are you displeased with us? because we're glorifying, here we are. But obviously they didn't understand what's happening. God did not explain it to them, explain it, because they will not understand until they see. So all he said was this, He said, I know that which you just do not know. You cannot know. So Allah created Adam alayhi salam. So simple and powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Jibreel alayhi salam to bring soils, from different parts of the world. That's why amongst human beings you've got the white and the black, and you've got the dark and the tan, and the law and the fair, and you, then you've got the blonde, and you've got the black hair, and then you've got the red hair. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from different parts of the different source from around the world, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that to be a sticky, black, dark mud. Okay. Like a vase, a statue. An empty, hollow statue. And because he was empty and hollow and he was like a statue, he was like a salsalin kal fakhar. So he had that tinkling noise if someone touched him. Who used to touch him? The angels. They wanted to check him out. What's this? Something new. Something new in the neighborhood. Well, no, who's this guy? What is he? What is he made of? That's the first one we see a crazy The Aussie this. Muslims always scream. What is he? So they used to go and touch him. And when they used to touch him and he used to make that tinkling noise, there's some narrations that say that the angels used to get scared, petrified, they used to run away. But he used to stick around Iblis. And Iblis, he's, he's starting to think here. What is so special about this creature which God had created? Curiosity. And at the same time, something began to develop in his heart. A form of jealousy. Why? Here is Iblis among the rank of the angels, wanting to please his Lord, loves his Lord, wants to please him. And now something had come up which he had never anticipated, never thought of, and suddenly he feels something strange coming out. He could have controlled it, but he let it take over, consume him. It was the jealousy. Jealousy began. So he went to look at this creature and he saw it. It didn't look too impressive to him. And he was able to, th to flow through it because he's created from a less denser material, which is f flames of fire. He was able to flow through this body. And he found, as in the Hadith, he found that we were hollow. If you take the drain the blood out and everything, we're very hollow, actually. As time went, Allah left the body of Adam alayhi salam like that. And every time Iblis looked at it, he felt fear a bit, but at the same time, He's trying to beat his fear and say, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. Do whatever you want. Allah left him there until that jealousy developed more and more and more. More. And now it turned into prou proudiness, arrogance. Jealousy turned into proudiness. Allah created right. Adam and put his soul into him. When Allah Azza wa Jal blew into Adam alayhi salam or breathed into Adam alayhi salam, the soul started to come from his head, from the top to the bottom. He didn't go in all at once. It started from top, his head, his shoulders, his chest, his stomach, his thighs, his feet. It's been narrated that when Adam السلام, first sensed life coming into his eyes, he was in the Jannah. 
He was in the paradise. So now his eyes started to sight. And what was the first thing that he saw? He saw the beauty of the Jannah and the beautiful fruits of the Jannah. Subhanallah, straight away. Captivated his attention. So what did Adam alayhi salam wanted to do? Before the soul and life had reached his feet, Adam wanted to jump and go and get the fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلِ Mankind is created out of haste. Rush, rush, rush. Always wants everything quick, quick, quick. The nature of mankind. Natural inclination, the desires. And then life and the soul entered the entire body of Adam. Now, now Adam alayhi salam came to life. Before that, he was just a statue. And now he's a human being. He's a living. One of the first things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam. Bow down to him on the ground, to Adam alayhi salam. This is something that I have questions about. I cannot fully explain it to myself. Why would the angels prostrate to Adam, which is a man? Shouldn't all of God's creatures simply prostrate to God himself? I do understand that this is in that context a commandment of God and therefore we should obey it. However, I find that commandment strange that God would want us to prostrate to a human rather than to him. Even this would seem like a test if by any chance I would receive revelation and within that revelation I would hear to prostrate to men I would deny it as well because I would only prostrate to God. Therefore, out of my own perspective, Iblis did the right thing, not to prostrate to a human, but rather just prostrate in front of God. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this and please give me the Islamic explanation if you can. The angels all obeyed. There's a letter there. The letter before the word Sajadu, which means they prostrated, there's a letter. It says Fa, Fa Sajadu. Okay. Fa Sajadu means they immediately prostrated. No hesitation. Then Allah says, Illa Iblis. Except for Iblis, he didn't prostrate. Then Allah further explains why Abba, he chose to, re to refuse. He actually objected. He refused. So it was a conscious refusal. So you don't think that he couldn't, he could, but he consciously refused. The reason he refused is because he allowed himself to be proud. Proud as in not happy, arrogant. And that resulted in him becoming among the disbelievers. He hid the truth, kafir, the, literally the word kafir means to hide the truth deep and to cover it up. That's what kafir means. No. Yeah, yet again, out of my own perspective, and guys, I'm not a scholar, not a Christian scholar, not an Islamic scholar, I'm simply sharing my perspective, hence the channel's name. I'm asking questions here. Why was that pride? Was it really pride to not prostrate in front of man, to not prostrate in front of creation, but only in front of your creator? Was it really pride? Please let me know what you think. Knowing the truth, hiding it, denying it. So kufr can also mean denial not just disbelief. But denial of what exactly? Denial of the truth, knowing it. Allah says, What prevented you, O Iblis, to prostrate to one who I have created with my own hands? Allah created him directly. What did Iblis respond? I am better, I than, am him. better than him. Okay. Ana khayrun min so within that explanation, I do understand that in this context, this is pride. I am better, sure. better than him. Why? Why? Khalaqtani Khalaqtani min 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 you made me, you out, made of me out of fire. You made him out of clay. clay. I'm from fire. fire. He's from, he's from he's clay. From clay. Allah then said to him, Okay, very well. Are you adamant about your decision? said, I am adamant. Allah gave him chances. He continued. Then Allah finally said to him, I created him and I am the one who commanded you. You have disobeyed me outright and arrogantly. This is Iblis's reply. He swore an oath by God's honor and his might. It means he believes in God. He knows God better than most people of today and of the past. In fact, maybe more than anyone who's existed except for the prophets. He knows Allah very well. 
by your might and by your power, I will lead them all astray. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He swears by Allah's honor and might, acknowledging his might and honor. And then he tells him what you've done, I'm going to wreck it. Mm. Allah said, okay, very well. Since you've done that, I'll give you some ideas as well, because you can go for that challenge. I'll challenge you too. He said, climb on top of any one of them that you are able to. He says, Istafziz, be a good horseman and climb on top of the servants who want to be horses for you and try to delude them away with your voice. Sautik, what's shaitan's voice? And then he said, and try to delude them away by showing them materialism, materialistic things. Let them be involved in materialistic things Powerful. with their cars and their homes and their clothes and their money and their this and their, their desires. And sharikhum, associate with them, like be a part, be a partner with their children. Mm -hmm. Use their children against them. them and with their money, use their money against them. Wa'idhum <laughs> and give them false hopes or false promises. And also in another verse, make them afraid, make them afraid of poverty that in the future they're going to get poor. So then they'll resort to haram. They'll resort to theft or to uh, indecent types of jo haram jobs to earn their money or to indecent earnings, improper earnings. Psh. Make them afraid that you're going to get poor. You're going to lose out. You're going to be out on the street. So go and get haram. Do that. Allah is telling the shaitan to do that. Allah says, but the shaitan never promises anyone except deception. He does not mean anything he says. He knows you better than yourself. And he works step by step. This is what Iblis replied. He said, Then, O oh my Lord, anzirni ila yawmi yubathun. Okay, the challenge between you and me is there now. But I want something from you. If that's the case, keep me alive until the day they are resurrected. Give me time. Allah says, We will give you time, but not what you're asking. Not until the day of resurrection. You want to escape death? No. We will give you time until the end of the world. When the hour goes, you will die with them. That's your time. Then Allah said to him, but wait. I'm going to tell you something. My true servants, you will not have power over them. That's the only thing. Then the Iblis replied, he said, okay, I will lead them all astray. Except your servants among them who are sincere. Those are the only types of people, my brothers and sisters, whom the Iblis and the Shayateen have absolutely no power over. The ones whose hearts are absolutely sincere. There's no hypocrisy in it. Wow. Repent to Allah when they do wrong. They feel regret when they've done wrong. They blame themselves when they've gone astray. And they complain to Allah. All right, and this is it for today's video. Very, very powerful video indeed, man. Especially the end really grabbed my attention when it came down to the materialism and the delusion of us and our children. This rings so true, especially if you look at this day and age, of course, the indoctrination of children within schools and this reoccurring voice that wants to get you into sin, that wants to get you into haram. I've seen it with so many friends straying off the path but with myself as well of course and it is also more powerful that there is still a chance for the true believers for the people that truly want to repent that there is essentially a way to return to our lord by simply being truthful being sincere coming to god with a truthful heart and asking for forgiveness absolutely powerful video really moved me there in the end all right guys but this is it for today's video if you liked it leave it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel any further via patreon for example all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support guys i truly appreciate it as always may god bless you all much love and peace